my name is Mike Mead. I'm here at the Digit Me project at the University of Central Lancashire in Burnley, and I'm a self-taught 3D printer. I've been working here since July, and we've set up to help manufacturing companies across the Northwest grow and develop their manufacturing process. We make use of the advanced technology that you can see behind me, uh, one of which is 3D printing. So today I'm going to talk to you about finishing your 3D prints. So we've designed it, we've produced it on the printer and we've taken it off. So the first job that we've got to do for finishing is to take it off the perforated board and remove the support material called the scaffolding. Here's one we prepared earlier and we're going to take it off the board. Nice and gentle, fingers out the way and just slide your blade underneath and just peel them away one at a time. This is a multi-part model, so there's various bits on the same board. Very indifferent models of printer, such as the MakerBot, print straight onto a bed, so you won't have the perforated board, so you won't have to remove that. You'll just have the basic scaffolding that surrounds the model. So now we can start taking the scaffolding off. Most of this should come away by hand, so literally break it away. Just keep peeling it back, get rid of the excess, and you'll start to see your model take shape underneath. Just be careful with any loose, smaller bits, particularly arms and legs and hands, um, as they are liable to break off. And the support material should offer you very little resistance. If it's proven very difficult to get off, it's probably because it's part of the actual model and isn't meant to come away. And then if you've got any sort of sockets and things like that, you can just use a little file, just pop out the support material. So we've taken off our scaffold, we've sanded, we've filled, we've spent hours getting our perfect model. The next step is to paint them. But if you're anything like me, you get a little bit clumsy and they break. So first things first, let's repair it. It's a basic plastic model, so your best friend is super glue. Well, if there's, if there's any little snags in your brake, just take a file and just flatten the edges off. And that'll just get you a nice clean surface to glue. Just a little drop. Be aware that if you put too much on, you're going to end up melting it. And SpongeBob's ready to face the world again. So we've removed our scaffolding. Uh, the next stage, if you want a nice smooth print, is to either sand or polish um, or use some other chemical methods, which we'll talk about later. So what we're going to do, we've got our model off the scaffold. Uh, we just need to check for any smooth edges. So there's a few little bits on there that we can just nip away, just so you get nice clean edges. And then anything else in between, you can just take a file and just run it over. Just a standard modeling file's fine. And you're ready to start your next step. So there's, there's several different methods for doing this. Um, when we do 3D printing, uh, the print is obviously made in linear patterns, so it's made in lines, and many people want to remove the lines, remove the texture. Um, the first stage is to actually embrace the texture. So we've got a character here, a SpongeBob character, that's had no sanding at all. So what we've done is we've used the linear pattern of the printer to make the ridges in the sponge. Uh, this works fantastic for things like metals and sculptures um, and grains in timber if you're going to use uh, a paint and then an ink over the top. Um, all work fantastically well. If you do want to take the, the lines out, um, the, first, uh, the first thing to do is to consider how you've printed it. And 3D printing is made up of a hollow interior um, and an outer shell. You can use a very fine grade of sandpaper, 240, 
up to a 1200, anything in between, but don't go any coarser than that. Just very gently, just take the top off it and work your way down. It is quite a time consuming process. The alternative is to cover them up. I've gone for a much, much cheaper method and have tried with a household polyfiller. So just a little bit of water just to get it loose enough to work with. And I just work it with my fingers. And you can just push it in to the linear pattern and just try and cover as you go. Don't worry about the mess. Somebody else will clean it up. And what you'll do is you'll gradually cover your lines and on the plastic, it dries very quickly. And you can see already that it's starting to sit in with those linear patterns. So you can wait for it to dry and then sand it back and just keep layering it up. So push on as much as you like and just keep layering it and keep sanding it back till you get the smooth finish that you like. If you're working on quite an intricate model, something like this one, then bear in mind the more layers of filler you put on, the more detail you're killing in the model. So you can smooth it and you can sand it and you can take it to a nice smooth finish. But what I would say is don't worry about the lines. This is 3D printing. They're part of what 3D printing is and the lines can give you character. Character. Moving on to your next step um, is to paint the models. There's a lot of different types of paint out there. Um, you can use watercolour if you use them neat, so don't water them down. Um, what I've been experimenting with are artists' acrylics, which there's obviously hundreds of different colours of, or bog standard, off the shelf, nail varnish, which is quite nice because you can get a lot of different finishes. You can get metallics and glitters and you can do a lot of different things with your models just with the paint coverings. So we'll start with an acrylic. Here's a, a model of a poseable mannequin. I'm sure all you artists are gonna admonish my brush work, but we'll try our best. So just a little bit of paint. And if you work with the lines, generally it fills as you go. So just go, this was printed in the horizontal. So we'll just work our way across usually takes a couple of coats depending on what the background is. So as you can see the acrylic covers quite well. An alternative and a recent discovery, I'll not tell you how I discovered it, is nail varnish. Um, it's highly hard wearing so it's very good for using your models. It means the paint won't get scratched and chipped when you're moving them from place to place. Um, there's also a massive variety of colours and finishes. You get a lot of metallics and glitters and different types. Again, no primer. This is straight onto the, the model. And you can see, again, good coverage. And it comes out quite evenly. The one on the left is the acrylic and the one on the right is the nail polish. Both give a nice, even coverage. You can still see the linear pattern underneath, which is gonna happen through most paints. Um, but both give good coverage, it's even, and a good finish. So when it comes to painting your 3D objects, there's a few bits to take into consideration. Firstly, because it is a linear pattern, be careful where you get the paint. If you get it onto an area that you don't want it on, you won't be able to scrape it off because it'll seep into those layers. Um, a way to combat that, a way that I found, is go down to your local art store and get some masking fluid. Um, masking fluid is essentially a film that you can paint on. It sets clear um, and then all you need to do, just you can do it with a fingernail, is just peel it away. And it comes off just like that. And what it'll do is it forms a bond that'll stop your paint seeping through and it allows you to fill in some of your more intricate details in areas like that. Another way that you can do your prints is under a single STL file you can actually print in pieces. So this model 
came as multiple parts, all printed in the same STL file. Remove the scaffolding, remove them from the base. You can sand them individually. And then these are ball sockets, so just assemble by clicking them together. But what you end up with is a complete finished product that bends and flexes and gives traditional model making something a little bit different. So design using sockets and joints and you can give movement to your characters with the 3D printer. Really bring them to life. Another way of finishing your products is to use an acetone finish. Acetone is a chemical that will melt the outside of the product and smooth the lines together and eventually give you a mirrored finish if it's done under heat. Um, we haven't got any acetone at hand, but acetone is actually the main ingredient in nail polish remover. So what we're going to do, we're going to use an old coffee jar and some nail polish remover, heat it to a vapour and see if we can get a mirrored finish out of one of our products. It's a complete experiment, so we'll see how it goes. Okay, so we've talked about how to remove our lines through sanding or how to cover them up through fillers and resins. Um, this is going to be a live experiment. Um, you can actually get rid of the, the lines through a chemical method. So using household nail polish remover, I'm sure lots of you gentlemen have got those out there, um, and an old coffee jar. What we're going to do is create uh, an acetone vapour that's going to sit around our model and basically melt the lines. So it's going to sit on each detail and melt the linear pattern back in so we end up with a smooth finish. Um, this is something to be very, very careful with. Acetone, the main ingredient to nail polish, is highly flammable. So do not use it around a naked flame. It also burns with an invisible flame. So be highly, highly careful. Um, it's also not great if you're going to breathe it in. So make sure you've got the windows open or you're outside. And if you're going to do it, try and do it on a heated bed. So this is a, a heated bed for the printer. Um, you could also probably use um, a hob ring if you're at home. Um, just be very, very, very careful with it. So what I've got, an old coffee jar, a small plinth in the bottom. Don't use wood because wood is an absorbent, so it will pull the liquid up from the bottom and melt your model from the base upwards. So what you'll end up with is a small plastic blob, for want of a better word. Now you've got the difficult bit. If, like me, you're a little bit clumsy, you've got to try and get your model onto the plinth without dropping it in the acetone. So here goes. So we've got our model sat on our plinth and there's about sort of 10 mil of acetone in the bottom. I've no idea whether this is going to work, but we'll have a go. So what we want to do is try and pull that vapour up the side of the jar and sit it around the model. Acetone vapour is heavier than air, so it'll lift, but it shouldn't come out of the top. What we are going to do, just to keep the area enclosed and safe and to keep the fumes in is we're going to enclose it. So we've got quite a large box that we made using 3D printed corners. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a cover over the top of that. Don't make it airtight, but what it'll do is it'll help draw the vapour up because it'll create a vacuum. So we've got our experiment on the go. I'm going to put a top on it just to keep the vapour rising. So we should see it build up around the outside. I'm going to put my safety cage on and our torture chamber is complete. So that should take now, well, who knows, maybe 10, 15 minutes. And what we're going to do is set the bed to heat and that bed heats to around 100 degrees. So it should just be enough to get that acetone to bubble away and the vapour to pull up. Um, so if everything goes according to plan and your products come out okay, they should end up looking something like this. And that's the end of my 3D printing masterclass. Uh, I hope you've learned a little bit uh, and I hope you can go out there and experiment and try things out to improve your 3D prints. And good luck to you all.